Hey guys, and welcome to the real world. Today, we're going to take a look at The Mummy to see if it's worth it for your movie watching night. It's time for a real recommendation. Some spoilers ahead. Stephen Summers' The Mummy is an old-fashioned, family-friendly action-adventure movie. It combines some of the best elements of both the Indiana Jones series and classic monster movies to create its own unique little niche that really works for it and makes it very fun and easy to watch. Taking place during both ancient Egyptian times and the 1920s, The Mummy tells the tragic tale of the ancient Egyptian high priest Imhotep, who due to forbidden love and dark sorcery is mummified alive and forever cursed to rise again as the scourge of humanity. And then it tells the tale of ignorant scholars and treasure hunters who unwittingly unleash him on the world and only through the power of plot armor survive long enough to defeat the villain, save the world, and fall in love. Because Hollywood. Please. Not an Oscar-worthy story for sure, but that's the real strength of the movie. It never takes itself too seriously. It doesn't strive for realism or grit. It embraces its fun and campy nature, the one-liners and cliches. And the humor is the best part of the movie, mainly because of Brendan Fraser and John Hanna's delivery. There's already enough movies out there that are overly dark and serious. The real beauty of The Mummy is that it's a good break away from all of that. But that's not to say that the movie doesn't have its darker points. It is a monster movie, after all. The deaths, while not gory, are still pretty gruesome. There's this one great scene when a scarab digs its way inside of the character's foot, and we watch as it slowly climbs its way up his body, under his skin, as he screams in agony watching this happen to him. We see it go up his chest, then around his neck, onto his head as it burrows deep into his skull and eats at his brain slowly, all the while he's screaming in pain, suffering. I remember as a kid this scene scared the crap out of me, and I had nightmares for weeks. It pretty much scars any kid who sees it for life, in the good way. But the movie still makes me anxious every time I see that scene, every time I know it's coming. The character's death, though, was actually pretty funny, making it even more memorable. The Mummy's also packed with some great action sequences that really keep the adrenaline pumping. Large-scale battle scenes with huge sets, a lot of extras, good practical effects, and some pretty decent CGI are visually stunning. One of the best moments is the opening battle at Hamunaptra, the City of the Dead. Overall, though, the sets are pretty believable, and they bring you into the story more, very immersive. Whether they're from ancient Egypt or the 1920s, you're convinced that it matches. Something about The Mummy that you may not have known is that it's actually a remake. That's right, The Mummy was originally a horror series in the 1930s that had about five or six sequels. And while the summer series had only two sequels, it also had a spin-off series called The Scorpion King, which actually launched the career of Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock. Embracing the concept of Egyptian reincarnation, though, Universal has a reboot in the works slated for release in sometime in 2017, with Tom Cruise as a possible lead. I wonder what the story could be. What's the challenge, then? Rescue the damsel in distress, kill the bad guy, and save the world. Oh. <laughs> Overall, The Mummy is a classic family fun adventure film that holds up very well. It's lighthearted, it looks good visually, and even has a good bit of scare factor. It doesn't take itself too seriously, and can be predictably corny at times, but it works for it. The Mummy knows what kind of movie it is, and as long as you do too, you'll find it entertaining. It's fun to watch, and easy on the brain. If you like The Mummy and want more, then The Mummy Returns is up on Netflix also. It's essentially the same movie, albeit with The Rock added in. But if you find the movie too campy for your taste, but you still want some mindless fun, then The Transport of Three is up on Netflix too. It's not the best in the series, but you watch for Jason Statham kicking ass. Not for the plot. Well, that wraps up this week's real recommendation. Thanks for watching. And for all those times when you can't go to theaters, or don't like what's playing, but just can't decide what to watch at home, be sure to keep it on the real world. Like and subscribe for more videos every Friday, and follow us on Instagram to stay updated. And leave a comment below saying what you're going to watch this weekend. This has been John, and whatever you end up watching, I wish you all a real good weekend.